Welcome to this short webinar on the Enhanced Emulation Module, or EEM, for Code Composer Studio. It will focus specifically on the MSP430 family of processors. My name is Lisa Tobinsey, and I'm an Applications Engineer who will be guiding you through the webinar, which also includes um, a demo in Part 2. So here at Texas Instruments, one thing we heavily believe in is making your life as a developer much easier. And this involves everything from tools like Code Composer Studio, the development environment, emulators, um, providing real-time operating systems for some of the processors, examples, packages, as well as, of course, a broad range of support options for you from wikis, training, forums, so all these are there to allow for quick, efficient development um, using the TI toolset. The topic of this webinar, the Enhanced Emulation Module. So what exactly is it? Well, it's essentially a very powerful debug tool that you can use to help build solid and error-free code. So it's a tool you can use to help determine, try to determine the location of a crash, a problem in your code to examine your code and see what's going on and as we'll see it's based on basically setting a bunch of triggers and then deciding how to combine the triggers and how to collect data or what data and what you do with them so some of the features we have in the enhanced emulation module is well, first of all, you should note that it will depend on the MSP430 you are using. So some support a more, a more wider range of features than others. Typically, you have two to eight hardware breakpoints. Um, some things that are allowed are breaking when there's a read or a write to a specific address. You can use it to help um, added protection of memory. PWMs, timers, counters, of course, these may all be paused. And of course, low power modes in the DMA are both supported. The other thing about the enhanced emulation module, and of course, it's not intrusive. So we've made it so that when you're using the EEM to try to debug your code, it's not affecting your code at all or the running of your code. So as I mentioned, this is all based on triggers that you can combine or use to halt your code, dig into your code, trigger specific events. So these are internal signals in the CPU that are being looked for, for when a specific event has occurred. So a very, very simple example um, is to trigger when a certain line of code is run. And these are necessary because that is how, for example, when you put a breakpoint in your code, it's using triggers. And the trace features that we'll, we'll see a little bit later in this presentation also use, rely on these. And of course, you can combine triggers to create quite complex ones and to just continue helping in the debug scenario. It's a very powerful and unique debugging tool that we offer here. And we will also see that there's a couple of different types coming up, whether depending on whether you're looking for um, a specific activity on a specific address or whether you're looking more to see what data is being shifted between addresses and registers. Breakpoints. Um, an address breakpoint would be so, for example, when the address where a certain instruction resides goes is being seen on the address bus. So with a fetch command, and this could be a typical a typical case. Um, you can use any of these types of triggers and breakpoints to trigger state storage as well. Let's move on. Now a data breakpoint, this is where you're looking at um, values that are being transferred between addresses. So for example, when the memory address of a variable is being sent along combined with the read-write instruction. So something's going to be happening with that variable. There's activity with that variable. And you can take it one step further, which actually requires a second, a second trigger, so watching for a second event. And that is to, for example, look for a specific value on, 
after finding that activity. So for example, you saw a read write to the variable test, and then I can take another step and say, okay, what was the value being writ written or read? So I can say, okay, I want a breakpoint when the value four is being written to the variable test. Um, register breakpoints, these are good, um, I guess mostly for crashes and at the beginning stages of development when you want to see where where your code is at and what steps it's taking. So for example, this is an excellent example is using the stack pointer to set a breakpoint or to create a breakpoint to watch and to trigger, again, state storage so that you can see what instructions were run and where what your code is doing essentially. And we also offer the ability to take it down to the bit level and so there's a bit mask that can be applied as well on some of these on these breakpoints let's move on and so to range breakpoints these are meant for checking memory for the most part so for example to check was there any activity in the specific memory range either because you want to protect it so you don't want it allowed or because you know that you want to trap when code goes somewhere unexpected. So for example, if you know your code is within a specific memory range, you can use a range breakpoint to see whether your code ever goes outside of the range where your code sits and goes off into the weeds, so to speak. And so here, there's a few more typical cases on the on the slide as you can see so instruction fetches um, looking for invalid memory and finally um, a brand new feature in our in our latest version of code composer studio is trace which is how you can use breakpoints and these triggers to start actually capturing some of this data that's coming at you in two forms so you can either capture the instructions so basically you can use trace to halt and start capturing the assembly instructions that are being run either just before that point or around that point with an eight with an eight byte deep buffer or you can capture the data so you can capture for example i can use trace to capture the values that are that are going into the variable test like we discussed before and I can use trace to actually capture that data and um, it's very powerful in combination with the triggers of course because you can set a very complex trigger not only can you halt the code but instead of halting the code you can halt and trigger the storage or you don't even need to halt your processor you can simply trigger trace to start capturing the assembly instructions as they're being run. And finally, um, the next part of this will be a brief demo. So we're going to be going into debug mode and we're going to have a look at some of the features that we discussed, mostly focusing on the new trace module. But in order to do that, we'll see breakpoints as well during the course of this quick demo. So let me hit the debug button to select that and proceed into debug mode. Load the code, and we can see as typical with Code Composer Studio, we come up halted at main. So now let's add a breakpoint, and what we're going to do is this variable that just continues counting up over the course of the program. We're going to put a breakpoint, watch point actually, which is a type of breakpoint there, in order to collect that data with the trace module. So open the breakpoint view, let's add a new, let me just cancel that, I'm going to add a watch point, and we can see here that this MSP430, which happens to be an F5529, supports a variety of breakpoints, and you can explore them yourself as well after this webinar. Watch points, so let's put the watch point on our variable. Now, in order to connect it to the trace module and collect data, we need to change a couple properties. So we're going to change halt target. No, instead I would like to trigger storage. 
and no instruction fetch. Instead, let's do write because we simply want to collect the data, what's being written to the variable. Select OK. Now let's open the trace module, which is view, other, debug, trace. So here we go. We have the trace module open, and we just need to configure it. And we can do that by start immediately, stop on trigger, store on trigger, and stop when buffer is full. Let's do that. Now let's select OK, and select OK, start our trace module, start our code. And here we can see that um, we have an 8-byte deep buffer, as we discussed in the slides. And we can see we've captured 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we've captured the first 8 writes to our w loop counter variable. And so this just shows you the data portion of trace and one way that you can use this trace module and combine it with breakpoints and complex triggers. It is ver a very powerful debug tool. And as a final step, what we're will do is we're going to go into debug mode again and one sec well, let me stop this let me pause and reset the the processor and this time what we're going to do is i'm also going to remove this breakpoint now what we're going to do is we're going to look at what instructions are being sent so or being executed so i'm going to put a a breakpoint here just by double clicking and then i'm going to change the configuration here of um of the properties so what i'm going to do is start immediately and stop on trigger instruction fetch and i'm going to select okay i'm going to start my trace module and clear it and then I'm going to press play. And here we can see that this is a good way that we can capture the assembly instructions that your code is running through. And again, very excellent for debugging because if your code goes off to somewhere unexpected, this is one potential way to capture what's the code actually doing why is it going off and doing something unexpected where where is the discrepancy between the expected and the assembly instructions that are actually have come out of the code and so for example if i hit run again we see we've captured a bit more and now we've captured a few more instructions until the buffer is full so now we have our eight full buffer and so that gives you a good idea i think of how powerful this tool is what it looks like where to find it and finally thank you very much for your time and for watching this webinar